Now that we've created a concept checklist, it's now time to create an assessment for each concept on our list. I like to call these assessments quizzes because that term tends to be less threatening than test or assessment. In addition, the goal is to make these quizzes short, yet highly informative of student understanding. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Sit tight and join me in exploring what makes a good concept quiz. Creating concept quizzes before a unit begins is ideal because it allows us to know where we are going before we start teaching. But what makes a good quiz? And how can we know how well students understand a concept? Let's start by taking a look at the rating scale I stole from Niles New Tech in Michigan. It's important for students and teachers both to know that we're not just scoring a quiz, but we're actually seeking categories of learning. I don't want anyone to think students are just a C level or an A level student. Instead, it's helpful to look at grades with meanings attached. For example, as you can see here, if a student scores a 6 on a quiz, yes, this technically means they're failing. However, I prefer to rephrase it as they're not there yet. Similarly, we could look at a score of 7 as barely passing, or we could look at it as a student with emerging understanding. Recategorizing grades is helpful for creating positive mindsets in our students. Now, with creating a concept quiz in mind, Starting with the rating scale is important because these are the levels of understanding we're trying to uncover when we give a quiz. More than just a grade, we're trying to see if a student is emerging, proficient, or advanced in their understanding. I've found that in order to rate a student's understanding with these levels, then the questions on a quiz have to progress through these levels as well. For example, a mistake I made in the past was that my questions tended to be too easy and this made it difficult to truly know if a student was hitting the advanced or mastery level. Easy questions could realistically only allow me to know if a student reached up to the proficient level and no higher. Therefore, in order to improve this, I ended up using the following question distribution for each quiz. Every quiz has three proficient level questions, two advanced level questions, and one mastery level question. This is a total of six questions, so it's a small snapshot of their learning but the progressive difficulty of the questions is also very informative of student understanding. This is the number that I landed on after many years, and I think it's a sweet spot for both having enough body of work to accurately capture understanding while not having too many questions to overwhelm students or make retakes difficult. With retakes in particular, if there are too many questions, students may avoid retakes simply because they don't want to work on a lengthy assessment, not because they're incapable of showing growth. In addition, short quizzes make quiz analysis much easier because we don't have to look through lengthy assessments. Instead, we can see where we need to improve in an efficient manner. So, that's the overall structure of every quiz. Now let's dive into each question level. Let's start with proficient level questions. Here's the proficient category again. It represents an 8 on the grading scale, the equivalent of an 80 in the gradebook, and our rationale is that the learner has demonstrated understanding of the specific knowledge and skills. Basically, proficient level questions are skill level questions. Can the student do the questions we've been working on frequently in class? There really aren't any surprises with these questions. They're straightforward and they let the teacher know that the student has picked up the skill during the unit. Here's an example from a quiz about slope to illustrate. As you can see, it's just a straightforward question. What is the slope represented in this table? We've worked on this in class a lot, and it lets me know whether the student has picked up the skill of calculating slope. If they do well on three questions in this category, I'm confident as a teacher that they're proficient in their learning. Now let's move on to an advanced 90 level question. Again, here's the category in our rating scale. It represents a 9, which is the equivalent of a 90 in the gradebook, and our rationale is that the learner has demonstrated outstanding scholarship and fluent understanding of the specific knowledge and skills. You may notice that we've ramped up our rationale a bit. We're no longer simply looking to see if students have picked up the skill we've taught. We now want to know if they can take the skill a step further and be fluent with it. Can they apply their learning, basically? Here's an example from the same slope quiz. Notice how it's not straightforward anymore. It's noticeably more difficult because a fraction is involved and it's a negative number as well. In addition, the structure is different from what we've seen in the skill level questions. 
It's no longer just teed up, ready for the student and knock it out of the park. They need to do some serious thinking to work through this problem. Therefore, if a student does well on two problems at this level of difficulty, a teacher can be confident that they've entered the advanced level of their learning. Finally, let's take a look at a mastery level question. The category on the rating scale says this level represents a 10 or a 100 in the gradebook. Our rationale is that the learner has demonstrated the highest level of conceptual and procedural understanding of the specific knowledge and skills. Basically, we want a question that is challenging enough to where if a student does well on it, we're comfortable that the student has mastered the concept and can be stamped with the 100 for this concept. We have strong evidence for everyone to see that this student has a great understanding of the topic. Here's the example from the slope quiz. As you can see, it's an open middle style question. More on that website in a minute. And it provides a great opportunity for students to apply their learning. If a student successfully reasons through this question, then they most likely know the ins and the outs of the concept. Let's see the entire slope quiz so you can view a potential structure for the quizzes you create. Notice that I actually like to label the sections as 80 level, 90 level, and 100 level. In addition, since there are only six questions, we can easily fit all the questions on one paper printed front and back. No stapling needed. It's a nice flow that students and teachers get used to quickly, and it also makes grading much faster. Finally, you may be wondering, where do we find all these questions? From my experience, proficient 80 level questions are pretty easy to come up with because we do them in class all the time. You can even take problems you've done in class and just change the numbers. Again, 80 levels are supposed to be straightforward. However, 90 and 100 level questions are definitely more challenging to come up with. With that in mind, these are my go-to places to search for them. First, I like to look for questions at the end of chapters and textbooks. In many books, they actually tell you which ones are the advanced questions, so you can pull from those to find 90 and 100 level questions. In addition, I like to look online at the following sources. Openmiddle.com, as mentioned earlier, is a great site with lots of challenging free-to-use questions. Also, I like to go through release state exams and release PSAT, SAT, ACT, and AP exams. If students can tackle questions from those sources, they'll be in good shape moving forward. Finally, New Visions has a quiz banker that is convenient to use. You can find all these sources with their links in the Assignment 2 section of our workshop page. After many years of trial and error, that's the structure I landed on for each concept quiz in my class. It's not a long assessment, but it still provides strong evidence of student understanding at multiple levels. In addition, the structure makes grading faster, and that's actually what our next video is about. Now that we have these concept quizzes, how do we actually grade them? We'll find out in part five.